return of Johnny Majors. Every day I wake up looking forward more to the opportunity at the University of Pittsburgh. Everybody likes to win. The most important thing is we want to have people in our squad and on this staff and alumni and people on this campus that hate to lose. They are the National Collegiate Champions because they won them all. I'm extremely excited to be returning to the University of Pittsburgh where I enjoy my greatest coaching success, the National Football Championship of 1976. Stick together. Keep our poise at all times. Be alert for substitution before you're supposed to be on the bench. 25 second clock ticks quickly. On and off that field quickly. Play like a champion on every play. Every play. Play as hard as you can play. Hit on the quickest, the hardest, and the longest. Go where you can't go. If you need to get a breather, let us know. We'll put somebody in your place. Play like a champion all night long and hang together regardless of what happens. And always hold your head up. Hold your head up. To the good, the bad, or the indifferent. For the first time since the 1977 Sugar Bowl, Johnny Majors comes onto the field as head coach of the Pitt Panthers. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Mike Gottfried. It's great to have you with us. Johnny Majors takes over a program that is going to take time to rebuild. There's no question about that. But what he gives them right away is an emphasis on fundamentals and attitude. His most immediate problem is going to be replace the record-setting quarterback, Alex Van Pelt, and John Ryan, a sophomore, won the three-way battle for that. Mike, I think tonight you can look for Johnny Majors to play a very conservative game plan early in the game. John Ryan's a drop-back passer that just became the quarterback in the last eight days. He's inexperienced. He's on the road. I look for him to start with some three-step drops, short passes to Dietrich Gels, and to try to get the running game going with Curtis Martin, to put that burden on Curtis Martin. Southern Mississippi starts the season with momentum. They have 16 starters back from a team that won four out of five a year ago. You can expect them to be conservative on offense, too, because they feel they have a defense that can keep them in a game with anybody. The key to their football teams are defense, run, speed, quickness. So it's quickness and speed versus the big offensive line of the Pitt Panthers. When you play the 4-3 defense like Southern Mississippi, you need defensive tackles that can get up the field. Michael Tobias, here's Southern Mississippi defensive tackle. You're going to see him number 94 against East Carolina making a tackle in the backfield. On the next play, one-on-one -on -one pass coverage, protection. He sacks the quarterback just after he throws the football. If Pitt's to have some success on offense tonight, they have to find a way to block Michael Tobias, number 94. And there are the Golden Eagles, coached by Jeff Bauer, starting his third season as head coach. We'll be back with a kickoff from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, in just a moment. David Robinson. Take the time. Take it deep. Welcome back to M.M. Roberts Stadium in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Mike Patrick and Mike Gottfried with you. It's our pleasure to have Dr. Jerry Punch working the sidelines for us tonight. And Jerry, I know it's like a steam bath up here in the booth. How about the sideline? Mike, it's a sauna down here. You know, there are certain areas of the country where the weather can have an impact on the outcome of a college football game. And this is one of them. The heat and humidity here in Hattiesburg can be oppressive, but the teams have gotten a break tonight. The temperature just a couple minutes ago on the field, 80 degrees, but the humidity, 96%. Southern Miss has been practicing for the past three weeks and temperatures approaching 100 degrees. They know what can happen to a football team. It can wilt in that kind of heat and humidity. That's why in the first half we'll see as many as 29 players on defense rotating in and out. They'll also rotate their offensive lines. For Pitt and Johnny Majors, well, they only have 70 kids on scholarship. So depth and experience are not a luxury for that team. Johnny told me a little bit ago, Coach Major said, hey, as hot as it is tonight, I'm going to have to play a lot of youngsters whether they're ready or not. Mike? All right, thank you, Jerry. And there's John Majors beginning his 26th year as a head coach, Major College's second tour in Pittsburgh after an unusual departure from Tennessee. 
Jeff Bauer, a Southern Mississippi graduate, former star quarterback, begins his third campaign as head coach with what could be his best team yet. Southern Mississippi will receive the opening kickoff, and this is a dangerous area on an opening game, Mike. Mike, you're most vulnerable as a college football team in the kicking game and special teams in the first ball game because you haven't had time to practice against the speed with which you're going to see the opponent. Teams will block kicks, long kickoff returns, punt returns will decide games in the first week between two close teams. Steve Kalamanithis, number three, a 6'1 freshman, will kick the number 29, LT Gully, and number 36, Chris Buckhalter. Buckhalter from just inside the 10. Follows the wedge across the 20 and drives to the 25. Take a look at the McDonald's starting lineups for Southern Mississippi. Tommy Waters starts his third year as the Golden Eagles quarterback. With more consistency, he can challenge the records of Brett Favre. The only real speed on offense belongs to Fred Brock. The sophomore from Montgomery has been timed in 4-4 on grass. The biggest player on the team, a pro prospect, Todd Beeching, switched from right to left tackle. He is an excellent pass blocker. There was a penalty on the kickoff. Pitt was offsides. And they will make the Panthers do it all over again. Well, that's a good choice by Jeff Bauer because you want to back them up five yards, give your kickoff return team another chance. You've seen what the coverage Pitt's going to use on their kickoff team, so you get an extra shot now. And Johnny Majors and his coaching staff huddling up on the sideline. And Calamanides will come back out, this time kick from the 30. Watching both place kickers in practice, both showed range on field goals of 55 yards. So if it comes down to that, we might have an exciting finish. Calamanides sets them up again. Same two guys, Deep Gully and Buckhalter. And Jeff Bauer, like Johnny Majors, likes to put his best players on special teams. He thinks it's that critical. High but short. Gully from the 15. Hurdles a couple of tacklers up to the 34-yard line, so they picked up 10 yards because of the penalty. Let's take a look at the pit defense. The switch to a 4-3 should help Tom Barnt, who moves from nose man to tackle. He'll be a leader on a very young unit. Tom Tumulty has great potential. He missed most of last year with an injury after being the Big East Rookie of the Year as a freshman. Free safety Doug Whaley, one of only two senior starters and the only pit defender with more than two years of experience. Boyd and Jones behind Waters. And it's Boyd off the left side up near the 40-yard line. First man to hit him, Gerald Simpson. Boyd on the carry. Waters, a three-year starter, succeeded Brett Favre. They would like him a little more consistent. He's a good reading quarterback, doesn't have the greatest arm. But he's posted some pretty good numbers in two years as a starter. Second and four, Jones the fullback, lost the ball. May have been stolen from him as he went right through the middle of the field so T.D. Moody had a hand on it. And Moody was the guy who swiped it from him. And look at the smile on the face of Johnny Major. We have play for turnovers and field positions of T.D. Moody, number 48. There's Tommy Waters, there's a TD Moody, comes around number 48, Ronald Jones number 35 with a fumble and great field position for the pit offense. He stripped the ball and then it landed right in his lap as he went down. John Ryan brings out the Panthers for their first offensive series from the Southern Miss 40. Curtis Martin, room on the right side. Martin stumbled but got to the 26 yard line. A gain of 14. Jeff Bauer last year had no problem with turnovers. Only 16 giveaways in all last season. The running backs lost one fumble. That's a heck of a record. And if you're pitch, you like the fact that you get John Ryan in the 50-yard end to start his first series on offense. Settle him down a little bit. Martin and Dukes are the backs in the eye. 
Ryan bobbled the snap, gives it to Martin. Outruns some pursuit, and then his gang tackle. Take a look at that Pittsburgh offense. They need someone to spark the ground game, and Curtis Martin could be the man. His development has been slowed by injuries. Dietrich Gels is the Panthers' most explosive talent. The junior became the first receiver ever with 1,000 yards receiving last year. And juniors and seniors make up the offensive line, but Reuben Brown is the only returning starter, also the most imposing player at 6'4", 3'10". Second and nine for the Panthers. Ryan to throw for the first time. Martin on the swing. Nice move to get away from the first man. Martin to the 15, to the 10-yard line. Shoved out of bounds by Perry Carter, the left corner. And this does not look like a Pittsburgh team that's outmanned right now. No, they're coming out and they're playing hard. And you look at the linebacker right here. He has the screen here, which is a little quick screen. That's Tyrone Nix. Here's a little throw to Curtis Martin. He just misses the tackle. He was there. He couldn't draw it up any better defensively, but he just missed the tackle against Curtis Martin, number 29. And Martin is particularly good at coming out of the backfield on those swing passes. He's the deep man in the eye. Martin again. Cuts it back, but couldn't get away from Michael Tobias. Big number 94 wrapped him up around the legs. Tobias, second on the team a year ago in tackles, had 91, and that's great for an interior lineman. Number 94, Michael Tobias, just manhandles the offensive guard, and then makes the play on the cutback. Curtis Martin tried to take it all the way back against the grain, but Michael Tobias was there waiting on him. Second and eight. Dukes is the single setback. They're confused for the second day. Ryan throws out in the flat to Martin again. Inside the five, they'll mark it near the two, and Albert McCray, the outside linebacker, number 32, had to make the stop. Mike, here's one of the problems when you go into a first ball game and you got a new coaching staff at Tennessee. You really don't know what they're going to do, so the first series, it's like a sword fight. You try to figure out what they're going to do. Southern Miss is really having a hard time lining up. They didn't even cover Curtis Martin that time, number 29, because of a different set that they're not used to seeing. Set him out in the slot. Vince Williams, number 30, checks into the backfield. Martin tries to hurdle and is stacked up as Southern Mississippi got there that time. James Robinson on top, number 98. They will measure for a first down. Tyrone Nix, the middle linebacker, was the man who was underneath all that action and jammed up the hole. Mike, you practice a lot against your scout teams in the last week of uh, preseason camp, and the speed factor is not the same as you're going to see in the first few series of the ball game. So it takes you a while to gauge the speed of the opponent. First and goal or fourth and inches? And it's fourth and inches. What will John Majors do? I'd be surprised if he went for the field goal, wouldn't you? Well, I think he's going to go for it. He's got his quarterback, and he's talking. He's fourth and an inch. You're on the road. Uh, you figure you're going to need some points, a lot of points here to win against this crowd in southern Mississippi. So he's going for the first down. Martin has handled the ball on every play. Four runs, two passes. Fourth down and a foot at the one. Martin is the deep man in the stack backfield. again. Dives. Touchdown. So the Pitt Panthers recover a fumble and on their first offensive drive under Johnny Majors get a touchdown. Pretty good start, coach. Good start. Good, good block by Chad Dukes, the fullback, number 40, in the left side of the line. You're going to watch the left side of the line come off the football. There's the block by Chad Dukes and then Curtis Martin going upward for the touchdown. Kalamanithas on for the point after. So seven offensive plays. Martin was involved in all seven of them. And Kalamanithas puts it through. So a big crowd here in Missis the Southern Mississippi Stadium is shocked as Pitt goes on top 7-0. Campus here at Southern Mississippi, and they could use some of that pep right now. The Pitt Panthers have taken out of them, taken them out of it so far with a turnover and a 40-yard march for a touchdown. 
Southern Miss, a team that likes to play the underdog role. They play seven road games, and so now they've uh, given up seven points. Now they figure they're the underdogs again. Back in their comfort zone. Yeah. But they really did pit a favor, and there's the drive. Took only 219, and Curtis Martin involved in all seven plays. Ran the ball five times, caught two passes. A young man who has been hurt his first two years at Pittsburgh, they feel he could really be a star if he can stay healthy. He may be worn out already. Well, the other thing is, too, by opening up Curtis Martin, that will open up Dietrich Gels on the outside. So that was a pretty good series for Pitt. Gully and Buckhalter are deep again. As Kalmanithis lines it up at the 35. And this one will go into the end zone, and they'll have to take it at the 20-yard line. Check in with Jerry Punch, Doctor. Guys, we told you the air temperature was 80 degrees at the beginning of the game, but how about the players surrounded by 46 pounds of pads and equipment? Well, we're going to experiment tonight. we got John Brown beside me, who graduated last year from Southern Miss. We had him come out and put the uniform on. We put heat sensors inside. And during the night, we're going to be watching inside his pads and see exactly what the temperature is on the field for the players. And we'll take a look here in John's pads. And right now, early in the game, him just kneeling on the sidelines. It's a cool 98 degrees. Mike? And John looks like he's worn out already, too. I hope Jerry buys him a steak after doing this. <laughs> Got a new fullback, Howard McGee. They'll toss it to Boyd. And Boyd with a hard run up across the 30-yard line. Simpson, the outside linebacker, brings him down. Mike, the option in college football with the hashes moved in into the short side, that's was an option. You, you watch the game against Southern Cal and North Carolina. North, North Carolina ripped Southern Cal with the option, and you're going to see more of it. But Southern Miss wants to get to the outside of the pit defense. They feel they have more speed. Boyd and McGee are the backs behind Tommy Waters. Boyd straight up the middle this time, cuts it left. Across the 35, dragging tacklers well into the 37-yard line. Tom Tumulty is in on the action. Again, along with Gerald Simpson, number 45, who has made about four tackles already. This may be the youngest football team in the country. Look at this, only two seniors. And you always look for your senior leadership when times get tough. But what Pitt has to do is prove that Southern Mississippi can't run the football against them. Second and four after the gain of six for Boyd. Boyd again. Nice lead block. Shifty run as he made a tackler miss across midfield just into pit territory. Doug Whaley was in there on the Panther defense. Boyd, four carries, 36 yards so far, and he'll come out for a breather. Mike, I saw Pitt play last year at Notre Dame, in the Notre Dame game and watch some of their films. They did a job, last year defensively, they caught people, and they made the initial contact, but you want to get rid of the blocker. They were not able to get rid of the blocker last year, could not stop the run. Buckhalter is the new tailback. Play action, and a lot of pressure. They try the screen, it's tipped it incomplete. Panthers really had a lot of pressure from Del Seagraves, 91, and Matt Hoselick, 96. They were all over Tommy Waters as he tried to set up the screen. Tommy Waters is a heady quarterback. Here with a good fake, watch his eyes, he watched the back, and he knows he's in trouble. Now he's just trying to try to get the ball over the outstretched hands of Matt Hoselick, but he couldn't do it. Third call back of the night is in there, Marion McKinney. This is their pass formation and trap up inside when they go to split backs. McKinney, nice hole off the left side up to about the 37-yard line. Gerald Simpson again in on the tackle. Cody Jones, the right guard here, is going to make a trap block to the split back set. When they get to the split back, you see him move. There's the trap. Now the good gain up inside. So you try to, when you get a penetrating defense like Pitt, you try to tra trap the defensive tackles. Boyd is back in there at tailback on third and four. 9.55 to go first quarter. Pitt up by a touchdown. They'll run the option again. Boyd. Boy, and Simpson 
is just having a sensational game at left linebacker. He has been unbelievable. He's blocked on the outside, Mike. He's able to get off the block, but he stayed on the block too long. That, when I when I looked at the film last year, they deliver a blow, but they did not get rid of anybody. And you can't let blockers stay on you. You gotta get rid of them. His fifth tackle of the ball game, but as you said, he was uh, held up too long and they got the first down. Spot the ball at the 37. Our first game of college football on ESPN. Coming your way from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, we've already had some fun. Boyd on the toss. And Boyd hit as he reached the 33-yard line. Ronald Jones, the fullback, from a great lead block before Maurice Williams, number 17, came up to get it. Mike, let's not forget one thing what Jerry Punt said early in the ball game: the humidity. And when you get long drives like this and you keep a defense on the field, that's not what you want to do on the other sideline. You want to keep your offense on the field. This is a nice drive by Southern Miss. They're doing it mostly on the ground, trying to wear out this defense and also take this football in for the tying touchdown. Boyd, six carries, 47 yards so far. Option toss the board. Nice play by the corner. Maurice Williams came up and cut his legs out from under. Last year, Pitt's defense was a sieve against the run. They were 98th in the country out of 107 major college teams. And coaches find that out in a hurry, don't they? Well, when you show that statistic to a coaching staff, they're going to say, hey, it's a new year, new coaching staff, new team, but you've got to prove to me you can stop the run. And that's exactly what Southern Miss is saying right now offensively. And there wasn't a lot John Majors could do. He came in late as the fifth coach could only recruit 17 players. Give him another year. McKinney, as they alternate tailbacks, they all run hard, they all run well. The inside the 25-yard line, first down, Gerald Simpson on the tackle again. Another trap, if you watch the right guard here, he's gonna pull down the line of scrimmage, make the trap block, and that's what breaks this play open. He gets the block in the secondary, Chris Buckhalter for the first down. McGee is in the fullback. He's number 38, Buckhalter is the tailback. a very powerful runner inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. Guess who made the tackle? Gerald Simpson. He's got seven already, but he's getting hammered, too. Where the battle's being won right now is the offensive line of Southern Miss. They're just really handling the front four of the 4-3 defense of Pitt, making linebackers make the tackle five, six yards down the field. Mike Warren checks in along that defensive line. He's number 98. That's Chuck Reese back to defensive on this team are not very big, but they're tough. Every part of the option is giving Pitt problems right now because this is the first part of the option. This is the, watch Cody Jones again, who's made some real good blocks in this in this series for Southern Miss, but this is the first part of the play. He's able to get a block on the linebacker and straight to pull back Howard McGee. The saving tackle made by Simpson by our county has eight tackles in the first quarter. Buckhalter, no place to run, cuts it back, buried at the three-yard line. You gotta like this, so inside, outside, inside, outside, all run, which eventually will open your play-action passing game. Buckhalter was a the guy they didn't know if they'd have this year. He was suspended in the spring for disciplinary action. Came back, he was the leading, uh, returning running back with 311 yards. This drive has already taken 535. And now Tommy Waters wants a timeout to talk it over with his coach, Jeff Bauer. Southern Mississippi driving to tie it up, but the Panthers lead by seven. We'll be back in a moment. Pitt leads by seven. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Hey, Mike, a minute ago, Gerald Simpson, the linebacker, who's made eight tackles already in the early part of the game, came with the sidelines, both hands on his knee pads, absolutely exhausted. The trainer, Rob Blank, was pouring fluid in him. They put some ice on his neck, trying to get him where he could stand up, shook his head, and he's back in the game, but the heat already taking its toll on a very active linebacker early in the game. 
Jerry, and especially on a drive like this where the defense has to work so hard, play after play after play, you can tell they're really in trouble. Kevin Bentley, the short yardage specialist, is in at quarterback. He's number 17, sophomore from Mansfield, Texas, on second and three. Buckhalter to the one. Mike, you got to like this strategy by Jeff Bauer. Uh, he, he decided to do this. He learned it from Whitey Jordan, who's the offensive line coach now at Clemson, but he likes to substitute his people. Kevin Bentley gets in on all short yarding situations, and you get a chance to build your quarterback second, quarterback's confidence. I think they'll just power right at Pitt here on third down. Third and goal. Try to hammer the left side. Mike with a big line. 14th play of the drive. McKinney on the option. Jay Jones looked like he had a chance to stop him. Got a piece of him, but McKinney lunged into the end zone. And Johnny Lamoro will try to tie it up. Lamoro will handle all the kicking. Last year, he was the long-range specialist. Knocks the extra point through and an impressive drive by the Golden Eagles of Southern Mississippi to tie it. Well, Mike, you gotta like the gambling attitude of head coach Jeff Bauer because he brings a second team quarterback in, Kevin Bentley, and runs the option play to the right side. Now here's Kevin Bentley with a fake, just a quick pitch to Myron McKinney and Jay Jones, number 21, with a desperation tackle. Just a good job by Myron McKinney. Here again, this is a pitch all the way by Kevin Bentley. Myron McKinney with just extra effort getting in the end zone for the tying touchdown. And Jeff Bauer, who was running the offense this year, thrilled by that 80-yard drive that took 14 plays. They only passed once, and that was an incomplete screen. Well, Mike, it'll set the passing game up, but more so it's going to tire the pit defense. Southern Mississippi believes in this humidity. They talked about it all the time here while we were Tell here. Me hey, we believe in it, too. Oh, there's no doubt. <laughs> Their defensive back, Perry Carter, told me the Cincinnati came in there last year and played them real tough in the first quarter, then kind of melted in the second quarter, just ran out of gas. And I played here as a coach with Cincinnati, and it's very difficult when you play early games here in Southern Mississippi with the humidity. And you can tell members of that defense already exhausted. Dietrich Gels, the deep man, to receive the kickoff of Johnny Lamoro. Gels can fly from the three. But Southern Mississippi has always had good coverage teams and they get him inside the 20. Roy Stabler in on the tackle, down on special team. You know that ESPN is your home every Saturday for the best in college football, and it all starts at 11.30 in the morning. College game day with Chris Ballerly, Corso, and Craig James to preview the entire day. Then at 12.30 this Saturday, we'll go to Columbus, Ohio. Rice takes on number 18, Ohio State. Then at 7 o'clock, the residents in scoreboard show all the scores and highlights. And at 7.30, our CFA primetime matchup, the Texas Longhorns and the 11th ranked Bumble. Of now Pitt responds after they have tied the score. The toss to Curtis Martin, who ought to be another tired young man here in the first quarter. Now I'm sure the Southern Miss defensive coaches told their defensive unit, hey, we're used to the speed now. We don't have any excuses now. Let's go out here and play three plays and out and put our offense back on the field, make their defense come back out and play again. And they shouldn't be fooled if they send Martin off to a wing this time either. No. They, they now see the formation, see the speed. That's John Thompson, the defensive coordinator, makes all the defensive calls from the sidelines. John Ryan to throw. Swing. Martin. Room to run on that swing pass. And he stepped out of bounds to 35. Tyrone Nixon, Perry Carter forced him out. 
We'll take a look at that Southern Mississippi defense. Michael Tobias, the most dominant player on that unit, second on the team in tackles last year with 91. The leading tackler in the middle of the 4-3 Tyrone Nix, like Tobias, he was at his best against the toughest teams. And Perry Carter leads the secondary, a school record last season, returning three interceptions for touchdown. A first down for the Pitt Panthers out at the 35-yard line. Dukes and Martin, the running backs behind John Ryan. Dicker Gels, the wide receiver of the tackle to screen. Martin on the toss. Up to the 37-38 yard line. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Jerry, what do you have? Guys, you got to give a call to Pitt Equipment Supervisor John Hatfield. He came down here. They didn't have any air-conditioned benches or any air-conditioned blowers that could rent. So what did he improvise? He went out and rented some fans. He went out and bought 300 pounds of ice and made his own air-conditioning system. Hey, with budgets as tight as they are in college football, this man knows a lot with a little. He's got to be a very valuable asset to this program. It's pretty cool down here right now on the Pitt sideline. Back up there. All right, Jerry, and the Panthers were lining up in one of those strange formations. Mike, what were they doing? Had a trick play set. If the defense did uh, anticipate, they were just going to quick pitch the ball to running back. There's Martin, breaks a couple of tackles up to about the 50-yard line. When they lined up, as, as Jerry was giving us his report on that ice down there, they had the center and a quarterback on one side of the field, everybody else to the other side. Martin, eight carries, 38 yards. We're going to watch Michael Tobias, number 94. Get up the football field, now pursue down the line of scrimmage. Everything you want him to do, he just didn't wrap up Curtis Martin, number 29, to make the tackle. Martin has handled the ball on every pit offensive play so far. Martin again. And when Johnny Majors finds a thoroughbred, he's going to ride him as far as he'll go. Well, he's riding Curtis Martin right now in the big offensive line. We said earlier it was going to be the big line of Pitt versus the quickness and speed of Southern Mississippi. I think Southern Mississippi is going to have to move around a little bit more on defense to try to confuse the offensive line of Pitt. But Curtis Martin, is sure the heat is not bothering him early in this ballgame. They'll finally give him a breather here and bring in Chris Patton, number 31. His normal backup, Tim Colicchio, is hurt. Patton is a walk-on. Three wide receivers set. Ryan. And tripped over the 34-yard line. Aubrey Johnson covered him there. Well, when you're running the football with success, you come back, this is wide open. The inexperience of John Ryan, he's not sure whether to throw, he's not sure whether to run the football, so he makes the mistake of doing neither. But the one thing Johnny Majors will be happy about, he said we can't have the kid force it, and he didn't force it. Right, wide open, so that's a play you, you put in the back of your mind and come back to. Third and five, they stack the receivers to the right side. Ryan with his tight end wide open, Raymond Belvin, but Belvin will not get the first down. Derek Hervey, number 18, got over there in a hurry. Belvin was wide open, and it took Ryan a couple of counts to get him the ball. A little bit slow getting the football to Raymond Belvin, but Derek Hervey just broke on the ball perfectly to stop the first down attempt. Now this is the area, Mike, where you have to worry about the fakes if you're Southern Mississippi. Kevin Leon will punt to Perry Carter. Southern Mississippi was the worst in the nation last year on punt return. They just didn't get anything. But people tried to kick away from Carter. He signals fair catch, runs away from it. The Panthers trying to down it and do inside the five. Chad Askew hustled down on special teams. He downs it at the three. 2.24 to go first quarter. We are tied at seven. Pitt and Southern Mississippi tied at seven. The Golden Eagles of Jeff Bauer take over at the three-yard line, and he has put his second team offensive line on the field. And it's something that's uh, the only way you can build a football team, isn't it, Mike? I like it. I, I like it. And the first thought you have is they're on their own three. Watch out. But I think that's why Jeff Bauer's eyes are so big right now. But he has confidence that they're going to knock it out of there. Boyd and Jones are the running backs. Jones. 
gets it up to about the nine yard line. He's only 5'9", 185 playing fullback. They say pound for pound, he's the strongest player on the team. If you're 5'9", and 185, a fullback, you better be the strongest on the team. You really have to. Here's Jason Chavis, the middle linebacker, number 58. He just chooses the wrong gap and, and ran away from Ronald Jones. The middle linebacker in a 4-3 has to make tackles. Gain of five on the last play, so second and five. Boyd, running room again up across the 13-yard line near the 14. They have to reach where they have it marked around the 15-yard line for a first down. Sumner was in on the stop, the strong safety for the Panthers. Mike, you're always figuring ways to make practice fun for your football team. The way Jeff Bauer makes it fun is because he's playing a lot of players. They know they're going to play on Saturday. So they're going to practice hard. They know they're going to get in the game. And I just like the way he substitutes it. It's going to pay off later on in the season. It really keeps the interest level of everybody up all week long. Third and two. Toss to Boyd. Nice cutback. Slip the tackle. Has a first down across the 20 to the 21-yard line. There's a flag down on the play to the other side of the formation. Offside. On the defense. Penalty flag on the play. Offside against Pittsburgh. Offside against Pittsburgh doesn't mean much because they got the first down anyway. This is, by the way, a Big East officiating crew. The referee is Buddy Ward. Ryan Pearson, number 81, set it by Jeff Bauer as a receiver, and we're under a minute to go in the first quarter. So Mississippi's been very impressive on the ground. For that matter, so is Pitt. Play action. Pressure. Boyd in the flat. Nowhere to go, and guess who? Simpson. Make this guy all east in the first game. Well, I'll tell you, he's making himself all east because he plays well with his hands and he's always around the football. He read this play from the time it was snapped, what was going to happen, and put himself in a very good position to make the play. Officially, he has six tackles and an assist. We have him for more. And we're only in the first quarter. Jones and Boyd, the running back second and 12. Waters runs the action and keeps. Dumped as he got across the 25-yard line by Jay Jones, the left corner. That's the end of the first quarter from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. The Golden Eagles and the Panthers deadlocked at seven. To bring up third and five. That's the end of the first. The Pitt Panthers on humid, unfriendly turf are tied with Southern Mississippi as we start the second quarter. <laughs> Golden Eagles ball third and five from their own 27-yard line. McKinney and Buckhalter through the split backs behind Waters. Waters fakes the pass, runs the option. Buckhalter slipped a tackle, but he'll be stacked up. Del Seagraves, number 91, was the man who slowed up the play, and then Jason Chavis, the middle linebacker, was the first man there in a swarm of tacklers. Well, that's the way you take away the option. Del Seagraves didn't give him an option. He forced the pitch and then was able to redirect and make the play on Chris Buckhalter. back in punt formation. That's Eric Estes, former quarterback. In fact, he was the number one quarterback on the roster here before he suffered a series of concussions. And that's Denorce Mosley waiting for the punt. Mike, remember the offensive line got a breather there for Southern Miss. Estes whistles blow. They'll wave this play off. And they may not have beaten the 25-second play clock. Pittsburgh's calling timeout. I don't know if they had enough men on the field. Oh, John Matrix. Won't like that. His specialty is special teams. Right, a good play by the safety because he counted the players, made the timeout call just before the snap. It's the Norse Mosa. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, just before the punt a minute ago, they only had 10 players talking about Pitt on the, on the line of scrimmage. Johnny Majors ran out on the field, was counting the players and trying to get Gerald Thompson Simpson's attention rather than send Simpson back in the ballgame. Instead, he just called timeout to avoid a problem with the return on the punt. So, obviously, a, a main man when it comes to uh, special teams, Johnny Majors has counted the players and knew he needed a timeout in a hurry. 
He doesn't miss much, does he, Jerry? Mike, I know the butterflies are always there when you're coaching on the sideline, but first game back in a new program, it, it must be something extra special. I think it's special for Johnny Majors because he, he likes the University of Pittsburgh and the city, and I coached there. It was an honor to coach at the University of Pittsburgh. It's a great city, great people, and I know he's had most of his success was the national championship, so I think it's great for him to go back, back to the future. He's Michael J. Fox tonight. <laughs> Estes to punt to Mosley. Wobbly short kick. Bounces straight up and they're down just inside the Pittsburgh 40 yard line. Anthony Owens was down there to get it. A punt of only 32 yards. 20 years ago, John Majors took over a pit program that was on the skids and had a fine captain on that ball club, Dave Wanstatt, late of the Dallas Cowboys and now the head coach of the Chicago Bears. And he built a tremendous powerhouse football team there. Maurice Washington and Curtis Martin are the running back. Martin. Boy, he runs hard across the 40 to about the 43-yard line. So quick, Mike. And you have to think that Pitt is setting up something to try to get the football eventually to Dietrich Gell's number 26. Martin, 10 carries, 43 yards so far. Now we have him for 47. Four catches for 34. And you're right about Dietrich Gell's because the young man can fly. He's to the top of your screen right now on second and six. Ryan gives to Martin again. This time Martin hitting the backfield. Didn't have much of a chance to get back to the line of scrimmage. And James Robinson, number 98, a shot put champion in high school, a big, strong kid, made the tackle. Martin Coaches were telling me the other day in practice that James Robinson really accelerates off the snap of the ball. He's the quickest first step that they have on this football team. He's other what? scores for you. This is not the only game of the night. It certainly is the only game in town, and there are 30,000 here to see it. A full stadium. Third and six. Martin goes to a wing where they like to throw to him, and do. Martin breaks the tackle, has the first down, knocked out of bounds. Derek Hervey took him out of bounds. Perry Carter, their best defensive back, was the guy who missed him at the line of scrimmage. This is just a pick play by Pitt. Now, see where number 29, Curtis Martin, is watching two receivers come inside. They're picking the Southern Miss defensive backs. Derek Hervey, number 18, so they just give Curtis Martin a step. It's a good play call by Ken Parcher, the offensive coordinator of Pittsburgh. Hervey was the guy who missed. Carter made the tackle. First and 10 Panthers. Ryan play action. Time to throw. Here's the bomb. Intended for Gels, beautifully covered in the end zone by Carter. Well, Perry Carter knows the same thing we do. They were trying to set up Dietrich Gels. But you have to figure four times in this ball game, they're going to go deep to number 26, Dietrich Gels. Here you see John Ryan with a fake. Tyrone Nix, the middle linebacker, comes through and makes the tackle, makes the hit on John Ryan. Now, he's able to get the pass off, but what he wanted to do was send the message that he was going to blitz on the play. Perry Carter, number 19, has good size. He's 6'1", 190, anticipates real well. He's the young man who had seven interceptions in his career, five last year, three returned for touchdown. Martin, the single setback on second and ten. Whistles will stop the play. Ball start on the offense. The penalty against the Panthers, or a, a, a illegal ball. procedure. Ball start on the offense. Replay Five second down. Penalty back to the Eagle 48 yard line. Second down, 15. There's Carter. Great speed. 100 meter champion in the Metro Conference against Gels who set all kinds of pit records. And that'll be a battle we'll watch all night on the outside. And now Southern Mississippi's defense will call a timeout on second and 15. Back in a moment. 
ESPN's Thursday Night CFA is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, where safety, reliability, and performance are never optional. 7-7 seven, seven with 13-12 to go first half. Mike Patrick, Mike Gottfried, and Dr. Jerry Punch with you from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. The first of our Thursday night telecasts here on ESPN. Washington and Martin are the backs. Martin, 29, has been the workhorse. Martin will get the carry, but they're waiting for him this time. James Robinson all over, along with Reggie Elder. Total offense, 95 yards. Curtis Martin has 95 of the 96. Remarkable performance in the first half. Southern Miss has six defensive backs in the game, only three defensive linemen. Third and 14 for Ryan. Here comes the blitz. They give it to Dietrich Gels on the reverse. Nowhere to go. Dietrich Gels tackled by Tyrone Mix, number 45, the middle linebacker. And they strung it out beautifully. When you're breaking in a new quarterback, you're looking for ways to get the ball to your key players. Dietrich Gels, number 26, is going to come around in the reverse, but it's a defense that has a lot of defensive backs in and can per pursue well. Roy Staber, number 20, makes the final tackle on Dietrich Gels. And, and he runs. tracked him yard for yard. I don't think reversing these guys is a good idea. They run too well, and, uh, but it was just a good play by the defense. Leon to punt to Carter. There's a flag down on the penalty. Carter lets it go. It kicks into the end zone. We'll check the penalty mark. Leon, it was fourth and 24. Illegal formation, not enough men on the line of scrimmage against the offense. Once again, a special teams error on a very young ball club. You get mistakes in your first ball game. It's another penalty where they're not lined up the right way. But I think what Johnny Majors, we talked earlier about a conservative game plan. Hey, it's 7-7. Seven, exactly. seven. We're in this ball game, and he has not allowed his quarterback to throw the ball down the field yet. That will come once he gets comfortable. They decline the penalty, so Southern Mississippi will have the ball when we come back. We're back in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Second quarter, 11.41 to go on the clock. 7-7 between Southern Miss and Pittsburgh. And many of you uh, probably tuned in expecting to see Mississippi at Auburn. And the debut of Terry Bowden. Well, we have a Bowden for you. Jeff, who is a wide receiver coach in his third year. He's on the left. And we are not there because Auburn received probation from the NCAA and decided to take the television part of it this year. So we are in Hattiesburg, Mississippi instead. And we've got a good ball game. Option Buckhold. After about the 26-yard line, Tom Tumulty, number 84 on the stop. Tumulty is one of these guys where you say, you want attitude on this club? He's got it. He says, we're going to be 11-0. And if they lose this one, he's going to say, we're going to win the next 10. He'll never quit. He makes all the calls for the defense, and he sets the fronts. He's the experienced linebacker on this defense. Two years ago, he was a superstar rising as a rookie. The rookie of the year in the Big East hurt last year. Keep it on the ground, more room to run. Simpson couldn't make the tackle that time, and a bull run by Buckhalter, just knocking people over. Finally, Maurice Williams stopped it, but Buckhalter at six feet 180, running like a truck. Good zone blocking by the Southern Miss offensive line. Carry Moore, number 69. You're going to see the right tackle. Just shields off. Just takes a position step. Now the cutback, and now he runs behind Todd Beeching. 6'8", 300 pounds on the left side. Just take a position step. Let them make a direction and cut away. Got back just about to the line of scrimmage where Matt Oslick was waiting for him. 
Ted, Tommy Waters made a good decision there. Tom Barnt, number Tommy 90, Waters. from the pit defense, was able to get pressure on him, but he had a wide open receiver. You can't run the ball as effective as they're running and not be able to throw the play action. But sure. Tommy Waters, you hear a lot about quarterbacks that are winners. He's the key in the ignition that makes this car go. And the reason he's such a good quarterback is he knows what he can do in the offense and he knows what he can't do. And he doesn't try to do what he can't do. Total yards so far dominated by Southern Mississippi. Lost the snap from center, fight for it. It looks like the Golden Eagles got it back. And it was the center, Kenny Ray, number 54 out of Irondale, Alabama, that pounced on it. But a loss of a yard will bring a third and 11. Mike, there's a new rule in college football, as you see Jeff Bauer, that the tackles have to be on the line of scrimmage. And they, But I, I just looked there, the right tackle, Kerry Moore, number 69, way back off the ball. They didn't make the call there. They have their speed receivers in now, Brock and Cunningham. Buck Halter and McKinney to split backs. And Waters to throw. Plenty of time, deep down the middle, Brock for the catch. Brock to the Panther 44-yard line. Jay Jones made the tackle, and Waters was on target with that one. A gain of 23. Tommy Waters can throw the football. He sets up, and he waits for Fred yeah, Brock. Yeah, yeah, Number yeah, seven, yeah. his speedy receiver. See, he's not ready. He pumps it. He steps up in the pocket. Good throw to Fred Brock. Wide open. But, Mike, that's because they're running the football so successfully. Now, if you give them both those... Uh, weapons, uh, it's going to open up the defense a little bit more. Running game is the quarterback's best friend. Buck Halter. Across the 40 to about the 38-yard line, and Southern Mississippi starting to pound the ball at the Panther defense again. Buck Halter, seven carries, 31 yards. He, Boyd, and McKinney have done an excellent job rotating a tailback. Jeff Bauer said we have to be a better running team this year because our wide receivers outside of Brock don't have a lot of speed or experience. We've got to run the ball, and tonight so far they're proving they can. Second and five. Give it to the fullback, Jones, and Jones hit the line of scrimmage. Allison, the first man there, number 94. Good penetration by Mike Halepin, number 94. And that's what you have to get out of the 4-3 defense. Watch number 94 just come down the line of scrimmage and take the trap play. He beat the block of Todd Beachy, number 78, to make the tackle on Ron Jones. Allopin out of Apollo, Pennsylvania. Third and five. 7.49 to go first half. Let's put the backs again with Buckholder 36 and McKinney 26. Over the middle, complete his tight end, Scott Harper. It's a first down. Harper, a walk-on from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Complete number 86, Scott Harper. Mike, Tommy Waters knows his offense, and he knows what he can do. And this is what he does best. He'll go back, set up, looks to the backside for Scott Harper, 86, on just a little curl route. He's wide open for the first down. And Maurice Williams, who gives up 70 pounds in that matchup, made the tackle. Very confident quarterback. You gotta like him. Three out of four, 35 yards, and Southern Mississippi will take its final time out of the half. 7.16 to go, second quarter. And Southern Mississippi tied at seven. Mike, big drive for Jeff Bauer because of this. He knows if he scores and gets up 14-7 or 10-7, he sold his team on the fact that Pitt will melt in the second half, that it'll be a meltdown because of the humidity. So if he can get the lead, go into the locker room, and then sell them on the fact the second half is theirs because they're in better condition, it'll be a plus for him. On the other sideline, Johnny Majors knows he's conditioned his team, but he hasn't faced this kind of humidity. He and Buckhalter, the running backs on first and ten. Buckhalter slips another tackle inside the 20. Let's check in with Chris Fowler. Chris? A big play on that Akron Central Michigan game at the Chippewa Stadium. Joe Youngblood. Going to flip the ball to Eric Johnson over the middle. He'll take it down the sideline, 50 yards for a touchdown. It tied it at seven. Now Faust Club is up 10-7. Guys? All right, thanks, Chris. Jerry Faust, team. The Akron Zips. Mike, the first game is such a game of adjustments for both coaches because of all the unknowns. And at halftime, both staffs will be busy. Boyd.
Boyd is in the new tailback. They'll run the action, and the quarterback keeper for Waters, Tumulty, came in and nailed it. That's what I like about Tommy Waters. Tom Tumulty played this as well as you can play the option. He didn't force the ball. He took the loss. Figure he'll come back the next down and get it back. Tom Tumulty with a number 84. He's going to read the option. The 78, Todd Beeching misses him on the block. He takes the quarterback and forces the quarterback to make a decision and cause the loss of yardage. Southern Mississippi, six out of seven on third down. They face a third and four here. Waters blitz from behind, and he's drilled. Tumulty. Big play by the pit defense. Tumbley, number 84, showing blitz here. He gets him in a situation where they bust a defensive call. Commit, nobody picks him up. He's just got a straight, direct hit on Tommy Waters. Good defensive call by Chuck Driesback. Johnny Lamoro will come on to try a field goal, 42 yards. Last year, five out of eight, all 42 yards or better. He's a great long-range kicker. And hooks it inside the post. Lamoro with 5.17 to go, put Southern Mississippi ahead. But it was the sack by Tumulty that forced the field goal. He could have had the 60-foot sailboat, the house on the 18th green. But all Ned Crowley ever really wanted was a home on the range. At Dean Witter, our retirement plans are as individual as the people who dream. We measure success one investor at a time. Well, boys, how do you like the new backyard? Where would you be without Weed Eater? The same affordable quality that's made us a household name for the past 20 years goes into every Weed Eater gas and electric blower and blower vac. Fine-looking dog you got there, Jack. Name's Poolan, after my trusty chainsaw. That's Poland. Oh, and to think he's been answering to the wrong name for all these years. Dang. Hey, that dog's a little different. He wants all his friends to be out there doing things to have fun. He's like a natural athlete. It's his dream house, so the trampoline, skateboard ramp, he'll probably have a swimming pool there someday. Just couches all over the living room so people can just crash. Yeah, he's kind of larger than life in a way. No one else like Anton. Kind of psycho and kind of dangerous. He's just a really nice guy. That is a blatant lie. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to stick around for halftime. We'll have college football highlights and scores. Also, pennant race baseball scores to pass along to you. And our halftime blitzers back for a third season, their junior year. That's coming up at halftime. Now back to Mike, Mike, and Jerry. Dietrich Gales. All right, Chris, thank you. 5.17 to go here first half. And Southern Mississippi, after being down 7-0, has come on with a touchdown and a field goal to take its first lead of the season. And Johnny Lamoro, who kicked that field goal, Getting set to kick off. The scoring drive, 6-24. Took up 59 yards in 11 plays. And because of the sack, they didn't have a chance to go for the touchdown. But Lamarro connected from 52 yards out. Dietrich Gels waits at the two-yard line. And Tumulty gets a well-deserved breather. Spinning kickoff, Gels one yard deep in the end zone. Great cut to get room to run. And Gels across the 35 to the 36 yard line where Roy Stabler makes his second tackle on special teams. Our CFA Thursday night series continues next week and it all begins at 740 Eastern with a weekend kickoff show. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso and Craig James preview the weekend. Then it's off to Greenville, North Carolina as the number sixth ranked Orangemen of Syracuse take on the Pirates of East Carolina. Roy Stabler uh, looks like they're working on cramps in his calves right there and not an unusual thing on a night like this. I like the pit offense, Johnny Majors, when you, you take over a program and 
program last year, Alex Van Pelt took almost every snap as a senior where you're eventually going to have to pay the piper for that because you don't get another quarterback on the field to give him experience. Johnny's paying that piper. Uh, but he'll develop a quarterback. He And, and John Ryan, so far, he's, he's doing what he wants him to do. He's playing within the offense, but sooner or later, he's got to cut him loose a little bit. 5-10 to go. First half, Curtis Martin, the single setback. Three wide receivers set for Ryan. Four-man rush. Time to throw, and right into the chest of Green, and he dropped it. Junior Green. There are only three quarterbacks on scholarship right now for Pittsburgh that are on the active roster. Ryan's Ken Ryan's Ferguson is number 28. Ryan, of course, the starter. And number 10, Pete Gonzalez, the freshman out of Miami who was recruited by some other big-time schools but said he wanted a chance to start as a freshman, didn't want to be redshirted unless it was necessary. They are waiting in the wings. Ryan, five out of seven so far. Should have been six out of seven. That ball was right in the hands of Junior Green. Four-man rush. Time, and that one was thrown behind his intended receiver, Bill Davis. Ryan's pass intended for Davis. And Davis is a junior out of El Paso. Excuse, Excuse me, Mike. me, Mike. They're moving Michael Tobias, number 94, around. Here he's on Reuben Brown, the big 300. 10-pound offensive tackle for Pitt. They're just trying to find where they can move Michael Tobias to give him that one-on-one -on -one pass rush. And a nice job by Dave Christophic, the starting left guard, to make an adjustment on that last pass block. Third and 10. They moved him that time. They Tobias made, nailed it. They may just have found a, an answer because they were stemming Michael Tobias Number 94, when you stem your offensive line, you move it at the last second. See, he moves. All of a sudden, you got your blocking call, and Lamont Lincoln just didn't pick it up quick enough. Michael Tobias on the sack. So Southern Mississippi comes through on defense. Leon to punt to Perry Carter. Chance to return this one. There is a flag down on the play. Excuse me, no flag. A 15-yard return. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Guys, remember our 310-pound sideline experiment, John Brown. We'll take a look. He's been kneeling here. He hasn't blocked anybody. He hasn't tackled anybody. But I'm going to check the temperature inside our heat sensor here. And it's fogged up, but it's 102 degrees with five minutes to go in the first half, and he hasn't played a play all night. You think it isn't humid down here? This kid right here is suffering back upstairs. Send him over the subway for a sandwich. Jerry, next week you get to wear the uniform. Boyd and Jones, the running back. Boyd. Not this time. Stacked up Mike Halpin and Tom Tumblebee, 84 and 94. Mike, this would be a good time to let Tommy Waters air one out to Fred Brock, number seven. He's a speed receiver. He's the type of guy that can get behind people, make the big play for you, take one gun shot, and try to go to number seven. And there is Brock, the sophomore from Montgomery, Alabama, McKinney, Burke Halter. The split back. Waters going to flat the Burke Halter, and he dropped it. That was nearly a lateral. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Jerry? Hey, coach is watching Chris Buckhalter very closely. He came out of the previous series. He took a helmet in the left elbow. He had some numbness and tingling. They were going to watch and see if he could grip the football. I think he just gave him an answer just now as he was unable to hang on to the ball. He wanted to go back in the game. He had pretty good grip strength, but they're keeping a close eye on the sophomore tailback. Mike? All right, Jerry, that one was right through his hands. That's a tough pattern for a kid to run, a tough pass to throw, even though it looks so simple. Tough to catch. Tough to catch. Anthony Owens, number 88. It's a tight end that they like to go to in the middle read here against two deep coverage. Third and nine. They go to the screen instead. Buckhalter. Caught that one nicely. Blockers in front and Buckhalter into Pittsburgh territory. He'll mark it near the 45-yard line. Hayes Clark made the tackle where they spotted it. Looks like it will be a first down. Now they move it back to the 47, right at the marker. One official came up and marked it at the 45. And then they marked it back at the 47-yard line.
Harper and Owens. Short yardage offense with Kevin Bentley in the ball game on so they fourth have, down. They don't have a timeout left either to talk this over, so they've spent all their time out, so they've got to go with this. Is this a big a gamble as it looks? I think it's a big gamble, but your defense is controlling the line of scrimmage. Bentley in at quarterback. No longer a decision. Trying to get Pitt to jump off sides, and they nearly did, and they let the right, clock right, run right. down. So Bauer was trying to sucker the Pitt defense. It almost worked. Yeah, I think he was going to try to get a playoff also, but they just got on too late. They made the decision too late, but now they will punt the football. Matt Hoslick, 96, gave it that little lurch with about a second to go on the play clock, and now Estes will come on to punt. Remember, he was an outstanding quarterback, and they've got to have a play with a punter throwing the ball. And there's Denorce Mosley going back to the 10-yard line, the freshman. Estes, beautiful spiral out of there. Hits at the five and dies. They'll down it inside the five-yard line with 2.33 to go. Eugene Harmon made the stop. Major League Baseball coming your way tomorrow night. A live doubleheader at 7.30. Frank Thomas and the AL West leading White Sox go against Cecil Fielder and the Detroit Tigers. Then at 10 o'clock, John Olerud has been in a batting slump lately. He's down around 382. And the Blue Jays against Tim Salmon and the California Angels. Mike, here's where Southern Mississippi is going to pay a little bit because they don't have any timeouts exactly. left. They've got great field position if they can hold the pier, but if it runs the football, they couldn't run this clock out without any timeouts by Southern Miss. Martin is back in there in tailback, and he'll get the ball. Got him about the six-yard line. Deke Adams, number 49, had him around the neck. Hey, Angelica! Here's where you tell your offensive lineman, get up slow. Defensive lineman, tell him, get up as fast as you can. Make him get back to the huddle. Because that play clock, the 25-second clock, will not start until the official marks the ball ready for play. It is started now. And with a 25-second clock to run it out, it looks like the Panthers are going to need a first down. Belvin and Scrocky, two tight ends set. off the left side. Herbie drags him out of bounds. Darren Herbie. And there is a mistake by a running back who needed to stay in bounds to keep the clock moving. Worst thing you could possibly do. He went to the outside, but he needed to cut up to keep the ball in bounds to keep this clock running. Because Southern Mississippi, if they hold him here, I'm sure will try to either try to block the punt down here this close again because they're going to get good field position. And with the leg on their field goal kicker, Lamoro, any kind of a short punt, and they have a quick three out of there. Third and ten. Wouldn't want to bet Martin's going to get the ball again, would you? Instead, they'll go to Chad Dukes, the fullback, and there's nothing there. They brought him in with a tight formation in Southern Mist. Good defensive surge. Albert McRae, number 32, made the tackle. But, Mike, you're right. Now they're going to get good field position if they return the kick. Here's the thinking right now. If you time the snapper in the pregame, you think you can block it, you go after it. If you don't, you return the ball now and get great field position. And they've got 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Carter waits at midfield. Kevin Leon. Flag is down. Southern Mississippi may have jumped. Carter at the 45. And the Panthers cover it well. A hit that the crowd thought was late right in front of the pit bench. George Mooring made the tackle on special teams. Now let's check the flag. Leon's punt for nine yards to the pit 35. Illegal formation on the kicking team. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. That's twice for that, Mike. And John Majors wants an explanation. Trying to look at this, you only have, it looks like there should be okay unless so he's calling him Pittsburgh. for being too Penalty far back. You need seven on the line of scrimmage. Just see four, five, six, seven. seven he has Mississippi to be calling down. this man right he's here for being line. too far back in the backfield, Mike. 
the uh, the rule is that that lineman's head has to split the uh, waist if you draw a line through the center. That's probably the call. And it didn't look like he was there. But they'll get it with 58 seconds to go at the Panther 35-yard line. And remember, they have no timeouts. Waters to throw underneath hits Fred Brock. And Brock to the 30. The only way they can stop the clock, get out of bounds, and throw an incompletion. If you're good at the two-minute offense, you can stop it any time you want. And Tommy Waters is a veteran quarterback, so he knows what his quarterback or his coach wants him to do at this point. Second and three. Waters throw incomplete. Had him out there. McKinney was open, but Waters underthrew it. So that will stop it with 33 seconds to go. The other thing is when you get a first down, you get a chance to stop it. You get a chance to get right back to line of scrimmage. So they've got plenty of time to get several plays off in this drive with 33 seconds to go. Waters, five out of eight, 51 yards. And he's hit a couple of big passes. Facing a third and three here. Buckhalter and McKinney are the split backs, two wide receivers. Once again, his favorite receiver, Brock, inside the 30. Jay Jones makes the tackle. That will be a first down. 26 seconds. Clock stops on the first down. Good hands by Fred Brock. The other good receiver with hands is Mark Montgomery, number 87, to the field. And there they'll stop him. Waters just backs out from under center, slams the ball down with 23 seconds to go in the hand. What you think here as a coach and a quarterback, Tommy Waters has to make sure he can get his field goal team on the field if they do have to go for a field goal. Now you've got 23 seconds to throw a couple to the end zone and try to get the touchdown. Jeff Bauer knows they've worked on this to run the field goal team on. They probably got it next to him right now, and they should have ready to go. Right now, they're at about 40 yards out for Lamoro. Chip shot in hell. Sure is. He's never kicked one less than 42. Brock and Montgomery, the wide receivers to the near side. Batted down, Tumulty. Oh, well, he's had a sack, and he nearly picked that one off. It almost stuck in his face, man. I think when Pitt goes in the locker room at halftime, they're going to talk about the pressure that Tom Tumulty has been able to give. Number 84, every time they brought him. Now, here he's against a real small back. Looks like Buckhalter, or no, Myron McKinney, number 26. And when you have that much, much size, you just overpower the little running back. So the Miss will have to change that protection. Cunningham, the third wide receiver on third and ten. Waters and incomplete intended for Anthony Owens. Crowd wanted a flag, but David Sumner looked like he had great position on defense. You can't play it any better than David Sumner, number 46, played this on the tight end, Anthony Owens. He has him open. You see Tommy Waters under pressure. His left hand may be on his back, but he did a great job with the right hand coming oh, to the flex of the football. Good defense by David Sumner, the defensive back. Timmy Lewis, the defensive back coach, used to play for the Green Bay Packers. Has to be proud of David Sumner. Johnny Major says he wasn't sure about his secondary. They played pretty well. Lamoro was already hit from 42. We'll try from 41. And he hooked it wide. Plenty of distance, but Lamoro hooks it wide with 10 seconds to go in the half, so the Panthers get a break there. Pittsburgh takes over at the... You know, Mike, the kickers have a better advantage this year with the hash marks moving in, so, you know, you're in a little bit, the angle's a little different for you, but he still hooks this ball, just got a little bit too much on it. See number one, Johnny Lamoro, lined up. Kicker usually knows when he hits it right away. He knew, he missed it. The one he made from 42 was hooking as it went through. And they'll talk to Lamoro on the sideline. The Golden Eagles still up by three. And the Panthers, the way they set up, it's obvious they're going to try to kill the clock with only 10 seconds to go in the half. And they will do just that. That's the end of the first half. The Panthers will go to the locker room down by three. Curtis Martin, the workhorse for Johnny Majors. Chris Fowler will be along at halftime, but we'll be back in a minute. 
and seven, Southern Mississippi over Pittsburgh. We're at the half. Johnny Majors, we knew he was going to try to take the pressure off his young quarterback, John Ryan, at the beginning of the ballgame. He certainly has done that because Curtis Martin has done the job entirely on offense. He really has, Mike. You see him here. They throw the football to him on the little swing pass, the little screen, trying to make the middle linebacker miss him. And then they also just have used him in a lot of different formations in a lot of different ways. He said from the start they'd be conservative, but they put everything on the shoulders of Curtis Martin. Now you got to ask two questions. One, the shape Curtis Martin is going to be in the second half, whether he can continue this. Two, you've got to eventually unleash your quarterback, John Ryan. Martin, 94 John yards of total off offense, counting the sacks. Middle. The rest of the team is minus 15. So to say that he Number has been the pit offense is not overstating the facts at all. Pitt will get the ball as we start the second half. Lamoro will kick to Dietrich Gels. At least Martin isn't in on the kick team. This may be Dietrich Gels' only way to get the football That's right. So they missed a nice job on him, but eventually you know he's capable of a big play. Gained over 1,000 yards receiving last year. First pit player ever to do it, and they have taken him out of the ballgame. Set to go with the third quarter. Southern Miss up by a field goal. Gels at the eight. and saved the touchdown. Perry Carter with that tremendous speed, the only thing that saved a 92-yard kickoff return. I'm a little surprised that they even kicked the ball to Dietrich Gels, but you watch him, he just hits the seam and then the speed takes over as he cuts to the right. Perry Carter, you just looked at him, number 19, he was spinning around but still was able to come back and make the play. Kicking game early in the season, long kickoff return. 66 yards for Dietrich Gels, and Martin will open a tailback from the Southern Mississippi 26-yard line. Here comes the fake end around, and Gels keeps it. Excuse me, Martin inside to the 20-yard line. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Guys had a chance to visit with both at halftime, and Jeff Bauer was very concerned about the inconsistency in the blocking in his offensive line. So we've got to do a better job protecting our quarterback, particularly in man coverage, to give him a chance to throw the ball. Johnny Majors, on the other hand, very pleased with the conditioning of his team today. We haven't faced anything like this heat and humidity. Very pleased with his defense in the second quarter against the rush. Got to open up the offense, he said, though. Going to give Curtis Martin a little breathing room, though, in the second half. Back upstairs. Jerry, I'm sure he went up to Curtis Martin and said, you're not tired, are you, son? Martin dragging tacklers with him. Got just inside the 30-yard line. Kevin Jackson was waiting for him. Halftime stats, Mike. Well, I think the two keys in the halftime stats are 42 plays for Southern Miss against 26 plays for Pitt. But look at the possession time, 2015 to 945. So that's the advantage Southern Miss was looking for to get into the second half with. And the key to that really is the Pittsburgh defense had to stay on the field for those 20 minutes. Wear them down. Martin, 16 carries, 54 net yards. Third and three. They'll shift Dukes to the wing. chance Michael Tobias came through clean his second sack John Thompson the defensive coach put, puts him on the center Lawson Malika he's able to come through and make the sack just keep moving him around on defense, Mike, to take advantage of his quickness off the ball. And this will make it a much tougher field goal for Kalamanethas. It will be a 47-yard attempt. Plenty of distance, but it's wide. And the sack may have cost him the field goal to tie it up. Timeout on the field. Southern Mississippi still leads by three.
to take your picture. Here we go. Okay, give me a big smile. Don't worry, kids love me. Oh, it's the phone. They want you to smile. They'll call you back. So this guy walks into a psychiatrist with a squid on his head. Oh, you've heard this one. <laughs> Ow! Funny thing happened to me on the way to the sandbox today. Look, I'm the mouse man. Don't cry. It's just me. It's not, it's not really a mouse. It's... I'm dying here. You like french fries? You like McDonald's? What did I tell you? Kids love me. It's been our observation that where there's a popular car, there's a lease. And where there's a lease, there's one of these. And, well, here's ours, accompanied by the Fillmore String Quartet, who, by the way, would all fit very comfortably inside the Isuzu Trooper, seeing how it's probably the most spacious four-wheel drive around. Why, they could probably even add another member if they wanted to. Maybe not. The Isuzu Trooper and the Trooper Lease, practically amazing. ESPN's Thursday Night CFA is brought to you by the Suzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drives. That is Jock Sutherland, uh, the legendary coach of the Pitt Panthers, who never lost to Penn State in 15 years, and Johnny Majors had his success too, especially in his championship year. Missed an opportunity to tie it up. He's down by three against Southern Mississippi. The Golden Eagles take over from their own 30. Go on the ground with Boyd. And the Panthers strung it out very well. Knocked him out of bounds to 30. Back to that big play, Mike, that took him out of close field goal range. Watch Michael Tobias because the offensive line is turning back. So Chuck Dukes has to come back. Chad Dukes has to come back and make the block or the tackle has to block down one of them. But neither one of them sealed down. Michael Tobias just roars through and makes the sack on John Ryan. Unblocked. And that is the factor of inexperience on that Panther offense as well as the defense. They'll run the action. Boyd again. Gerald Simpson hit him, but he dragged him to the 39-yard line. Boyd, 5'10", 195, out of Waycross, Georgia. One of three tailbacks used tonight, and all have run well. Option into the boundary again. The extra two yards that the run support player on the defense has to cover. As you see, Barry Boyd. And that's going to be a big factor this year, isn't it, Mike, for option teams? Most definitely. The option teams really get an advantage. Even the passing teams, because there's an extra two yards to throw your curl routes or your out routes, but especially the option team. Buck Calder and McKinney are the tailbacks on third and one. One of the Southern Mississippi players moved early, and Buck Calder is going to be hit in the backfield and lose five. And let's see if they blew the play dead. Otherwise, the Panthers will force the punt. Scott Harper, who was in at tight end on the right side, was the man who moved. And Simpson was in on the gang tack. Illegal motion on the offense. They did not blow the play dead, so they lost the yardage on third down, and they'll force Southern Miss to punt. That doesn't look like one of those that peels off, does it? No. It's the real thing. So that play never had a chance from the beginning, and Southern Mississippi will have to kick it away. You have to think right now, Jeff Bauer is the guy who's concerned, and Johnny Majors has to be pretty upbeat. Well, Jeff Bauer's thinking the longer we let them hang around here, that they're going to be able to make a play in the, in the fourth quarter and beat us. He wants to put them away now here in the third quarter. Has this to kick the most Pressure, but he got it away. Mostly at the 22. Lost the ball, but knocked it out of bounds. Eugene Harmon downfield. Let's talk about the hash marks again, Mike. This is a big move in college football and very important for offense. Well, when you talk about two yards, here we got a play where we got formation to the wide side of the field and in, into the short side of the field. This is the old hash mark right here. Now you moved in to the two, about two yards, so the free safety, if it's a three deep secondary, has the pitch man. He's got an extra two yards to cover. Dukes and Harmon are the running backs behind John Ryan. Martin, after about the 23-yard line, covered by Perry Carter. 
Curtis Martin on the Johnny Major's good. strategy, stay the same. Put it on Curtis Martin's shoulders. Don't ask John Ryan to do a whole lot just yet. Now, they took one shot trying to go deep to deep for gels in the first half. Will they try it again? Oh, I would. I'd, I'd throw it at least four times down the field because pass interference, you, he, he could catch the ball, beat somebody deep. You just got to get the ball in his hands. Dukes is the single setback as Martin goes to a win. Ryan with a quick sprint out, double pump. And Gels will make the catch, but not pick up much. Dietrich Gels a year ago set a couple of school records for a season and for a game. First pit player ever over a thousand yards receiving had eight touchdowns. 55 catches a single season record. A single game record of 104 yards. Dumps it off to Martin. Another one of those little pick plays. We got him free out to about the 39-yard line. But Harry Carter made the tackle. That was a good read by John Ryan because Southern Miss really blitzed on the play, gave him a little look that he was not used to seeing. Got man coverage. Here's the pick a little bit. You see him shift up. Now he has two receivers outside him. They're both going to go inside. He's just going to release in the flat. A little pick play, just get him the ball, let him run. Just like a pitch play. Ryan, 7 out of 10 for 64 yards. Martin has caught 5 of the 7 passes. Martin on the toss, and around to Gels. And Gels is stacked up in the backfield. There's a flag down on top of it. Number 96, Reggie Elder wasn't buying anything. Mike, he was clipped in the back, too. So, I mean, he really made a great play. And if he doesn't make the play, Dietrich Gels is down the sideline. But he was blocked in the back. Illegal block in the back, above the waist, on the offense. What a play by Reggie Elder. He saved the day for the Southern Miss defense. He started six games a year ago. He's a backup to Kevin Jackson right now, a defensive tackle. 6'4", 259, one of the few seniors on either ball club. And that was a whale of a play because you're right. If he doesn't make that play and get gels, there's a lot of running room. It'd been striking up the band because it would have been six points. Nine thirty-three to go, third quarter. Southern Mississippi by three. They'll walk off the penalty on top of the loss, and it goes all the way back to the twenty-six yard line. Now's not the time to unleash your quarterback. No. Now you really need Curtis Martin to get get that back up the line of scrimmage. First and 22. Draw play Martin. Southern Mississippi. Going along the same line of thinking that you were. Bobby Hamilton was in on the tackle. Southern Miss in a passing situation. They know that they've got him backed up. Look at the wide brush that they're giving on both sides. They feel they have the quickness to beat the tackles of Pittsburgh. Good call by Kent Carter, the offensive coordinator with the draw. Second and 15 for Ryan. Throws near sideline to Green, makes the catch at the 40-yard line, wrapped up there by Perry Carter. Pretty good secondary on this ball club, isn't it? Ryan Very Smith, quick. They really adjust Green. to the ball and break Out on the, the ball. Perry Carter, line. number 19, has good size. Now you're in pretty good shape. I like what John Major just did. Draw Bring play, a little quick curl pass. Now you're third and nine. Now you're back where you can do some things offensively. Panthers have the ball back out to their own 40. Ryan with that short control passing game. Needs to hit one here. And he had it knocked away. That should be an incomplete pass. Steve Latson, number 99, came by and swiped at him with the right hand. Got the arm. Important 
part of this defense is that Steve Latson and Reggie Elder, two players that made good plays. Here, number 99, Steve Latson, are backups. He just beats the block of Matt Bloom, number 73, to knock the ball out of the quarterback's hand. So Leon will have to punt again to Perry Carter, who waits at his own 16. No rush. Carter backs up to the 15-yard line. Nowhere to go. A return of two after a punt of 45. George Mooring down on special team for the Panthers. 45-yard punt. In the year 2017, halfway to hell. Oh, who can run and who can catch? Defensively, uh, I think the same thing. We need to find out who can tackle, who can pursue, who has a nose for getting to the football, who can react in the secondary, and find out what our personnel is. That's about as basic as it gets, and one of the things that's always been strong in the Johnny Majors football team, fundamentals and understanding what your personnel can do. Jackie Sherrill had a set of mutton chops on him, didn't he? <laughs> didn't recognize him. On Johnny Major's staff. Back to the ground game, McKinney. Simpson and Chavis made the tackle. Johnny Majors, look at the schools he took over. Iowa State, Pittsburgh, and Tennessee, they had all been down. And it took him a couple of years to come back. But once he did, he had tremendous records. Iowa State, a very difficult place to win. Then he went to Pittsburgh. They've been down for a long time, got him a national championship, and a wonderful record at Tennessee with 107 victories. This will be his toughest test, though, yeah. Mike, because rules have changed. When he came in in 73, we've got an injured player on the field. And Gerald that's Gerald Simpson. Simpson, the outstanding outside linebacker, and it looks like he is a victim of cramps on a hot and humid night. Talk about those scholarships again, because he brought in so many guys the first time he won. 73 he brought in 93 scholarship players to add to what they already had on scholarship at the University of Pittsburgh. Now you can only sign 25 in a year, and you can only have a maximum of 88 on scholarship. And it's funny, he talked about it to us last night about the rule changes, and he said when Jackie Sherrill and he were at Pitt together, they visited Tony Dorsett over 20 times. He said, I can't do that anymore. But the rules have changed. Well, you can bet there is a uh, Tony Dorsett-like player that Johnny Majors will be in his home a couple of times before next season. Simpson able to get off on his uh, own power. And look at this. Between them, 24 tackles, although several of them have been downfield, where you need those guys to come up closer to the line of scrimmage. They go with the pullback, Ronald Jones. Mike, for an opening game for both of these ball clubs, we've only had one turnover, only four penalties, that pretty good execution. It's been clean, it really has. And, and you have to you have to look at Pitt and say they've improved on defense because when I saw them last year, of course, they were really out of it against the run, and they, they've done a nice job here in the uh, first three quarters of stopping Southern Miss just slowing them down a little bit. The attitude is a lot different, too. Third and three. Option. Quarterback keeper, they will not get the first down as Waters is wrapped up by Mike Allopin. And you made a good point a few minutes ago. The longer Pitt hangs in this game within three points, the more they're going to believe in each other and Johnny Majors. Well, when you come off a losing season, sometimes you have to convince your players that they can win, but you have to show them that they can win a quarter, or then they can win a half, and you eventually win a ball game. And I'm sure Johnny Majors said, let's just stay in this thing, and something might happen for us to give us a big break, like a kickoff return, punt return, block kick, something to just get us over the hump. Yes, this is a kick to Mosley. Nice, high sailing punt. Mosley at the 28, fair catch. Hope you join us every Saturday for the best in college football, starting at 11.30 in the morning. College game day, Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James preview the entire day. Then at 12.30, off to Columbus, Ohio. Ohio State against Rice. And at 7 o'clock, the residents in scoreboard show all the scores and highlights. And at 7.30, our CFA primetime matchup, Texas and number 11, Colorado. tailback in there for the Panthers, Chris Patton, and he is greeted inhospitably. 
LT Gully, number 29, the free safety, led the charge. So Patton, a sophomore, 5'10", 210, giving Curtis Martin a break. And Gully, one of the players in that outstanding uh, secondary. There's Martin, no game. who has been the Second workhorse step. for the Panthers. Doesn't even look like he's breathing hard, though. He must be in real good shape. LaRon Brooks and Patton are the backs right now. Brooks, 32. They fake the toss, gets up to about the 35-yard line. And it's clear that Johnny Majors is not going to do anything with plenty of time left to go in the game to get his club in a deeper hole. You're right, Mike. Still has a whole quarter to play yet. Here's number 94 again, Michael Tobias. They try to double-team him. He gets off those blocks and comes back and makes the tackle. As John Thompson, the defensive coordinator, says, if you don't block him, he'll wreck your offense. 6'3", 275. He already has two sacks. Third and four. Ryan to throw. That little swing again this time to Gels. Made the first man miss. Got out to the 43-yard line. First down. Tyrone Nix made the tackle. McCray, the man who missed him. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Guys, work continues behind me on sophomore linebacker Gerald Simpson. They're using ice massage and stretch. They have him standing on the edge of the bench trying to stretch. He had a cramp in both calves. He had a cramp in one calf early in the game. Now both calves cramping. They're using a lot of ice massage and passive stretch. That's all they can do on the sidelines, plus force fluids. They need this young man back. He has been the bulk of their defense here in much of this game. Back up there. Boy, Jerry, you're right. He's made a ton of tackles. And what the defense would like more than anything is a long sustained drive by the offense. You're right. <laughs> Ryan made a couple of spins. Now he's in a lot of trouble. And Cedric Walfall, backup Cedric middle Walfall. linebacker, got it. Well, that was a slow developing play. Little naked thought they would take advantage of the fact that they've run Ross the ball the successfully. But Cedric Walthall, Ross who's a backup five. middle guard playing in his first Second game. Matter of fact, 15. the players told me the other day they were laughing at him at practice, number 57, because they said, we opened up in our first game against Delta State. You're opening up on national TV against Pitt. So he was really nervous. Redshirt freshman out of McCalla, Alabama. Patton and Maurice Washington, the backs on second and long. Nice hole up the middle. There's a flag down as he reaches the 49-yard line. Very hard run. Kevin Jackson chased the play down from behind. I think they're going to call Southern Miss for not getting the player off the field. I think they had 12 men on the field. Substitution infraction on the defense. He didn't get off in time, and uh, they made the call. He was close, but he didn't get off. And then Jeff Bowers really giving him an earful. He knows he's got Big East officials. He knows that they're, he's not going to see them again this year. They're not going to see him, so he better make his points right now. <laughs> he's getting his money's worth on this one. How much can you say to an official, Mike? Well, I tried to wear him out. Huh? I was always, <laughs> I was always trying to get the next call. I figure I'm not going to get this. Decline. Third down. They'll decline it because of the big gain on the run. It's still third and four. Did it work? I'm up here. <laughs> well, at least you're not down here with a striped shirt on. Get a tailback on third and four. They put him to the left wing. Southern Mississippi fakes the blitz. Throw the gels in the flat. The speed burner shakes a tackle inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Perry Carter tripped him up. Now, in the first half, that was Martin's play. Now they're putting Martin on the other side and throwing back to Gels. Well, now they're trying to get Gels over there where they just have one receiver picking the play, and Southern Miss has just not been able to stop this. Two, two coordinators, Charlie Coles on the left. He came to, from Tennessee with Johnny Majors. He's the run game coordinator. Ken Karcher is the pass game coordinator. They have two coordinators on this offensive team. Back to the ground game, and Maurice Washington lumbers down to the 25-yard line. He'll pick up two or three before Perry Carter makes the tackle. Maurice Washington carries Perry Carter did a nice job here because he wouldn't let Maurice Washington get outside. He kept him inside until help came from the middle of the field. Carter has been very impressive tonight. Certainly hasn't let Dietrich Gels get deep on him at any point. 
Made a lot of tackles and run support. Washington and Martin, the backs first and ten. Bryant stumbled coming out and then was swarmed on. And the third sack of the ball game will go to Michael Tobias. Well, if you're making... Tom, all, all Big East, you're making Michael Tobias all south. You bet. But he's doing it himself. Watch him come off the ball. He's just so quick. He's around the block, and there's just no place. He just got around number 70. Lamont Liggett, just no place for John Ryan. Liggett hadn't even come out of the three-point stance, and Tobias was all over his quarterback, second and 13. Ryan running for his life, throws it up for Graham. The Southern Mississippi defender fell down, and the ball was right off the hands of Curtis Anderson, who was wide open in the end zone. Carter stumbled. Anderson may have gotten away with a push. Oh, man. John Ryan just put this one up. He was under pressure from Eugene Harmon. Throws the football. Now, here's Curtis Anderson with a chance to put his team ahead. Perry Carter fell down. Wide open, couldn't handle it. Anderson on the indoor and outdoor track team, a red shirt freshman. This is his first ball game. Martin a tailback on third and 13. Flat pass, nice one deep. Ryan throws, that will be pass interference. An obvious call as LeBaron Rankins, number five, ran into Junior Green, who had him beaten. In college football, that's a good move. If you're beat, sure like LeBaron Rankins, interference on the defense. Woo! Go ahead and make the, the pass interference, because otherwise it's going to be a touchdown. And college football comes back to the line of scrimmage, and the penalties from there. You see Junior Green. Pretty good shape. I think LeBaron Rankins get caught peeking a little bit. He, he sure thought it was, did. He thought it was that little flat pass. He was staring into the backfield at the quarterback, and Junior Green just turned it on and went right by him. So they'll mark the penalty off from the line of scrimmage, and it will be hit football now inside the 20-yard line. They are well within field goal range that could tie it up. They'll spot it at the 13. It is a first down. Southern Miss defense looks a little lethargic right now. And maybe the heat is affecting them. But they, they're not moving around like they did in the first half. They really look like they don't expect Pitt to be able to do much again. But with all the sweep and all of a sudden the two long balls, they didn't play them very well. No, those could have been two touchdowns. See if Pitt goes back to the ground. Martin is the tailback. And they give it to the fullback instead. He'll get a couple. That's Maurice Washington. Tyrone Nix, the middle linebacker, waiting for him. And they're using Martin as a decoy. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Jerry, what do you have? Talking about conditioning on Southern Miss. A minute ago when Perry Carter was defending in the end zone and fell down, what happened was he turned to run and cramped up and fell. He jumped up off the ground and yelled, cramp, cramp to the bench. He's been hobbling around in the secondary. They're starting to have some trouble in the Southern Miss defense. Back up there. Thank you, Jerry. Second and eight. They've been on the field a long time. Martin. They string it out. Nowhere to go. Nix got over to make the last hit after he got a lot of help. LeBaron Rankins was over there trying to cut his legs out from under him. Player that made that play on defense was Bobby Hamilton, number 95, because he was skating down the line of scrimmage and they couldn't ever get a position to move. Watch number 95. They want to try to hook him. There's two people on him, but he continues to trail the play. Now opens it up. As long as you string that play, whether it's an option or a pitch play, out to the, to the sideline, you're doing your job defensively. This has been an impressive drive by the Panthers. They have reached the nine, but it's third and six. Ryan with a little short pass to Martin. Touchdown! I think the Southern Miss coaches are talking about the pick play. They feel like they're getting picked on this play, and they want it called. 
There's just nobody there to defend him because they're in man-to-man -man coverage, and uh, he's getting erased. And the, and the coaches on the sideline here have been very verbal at the officials. And if you run it right, it is a very difficult pattern to defend. Kalamanifas for the point after. The Panthers have regained the lead. And the 10-point underdogs now lead by four. <laughs> Curtis Martin has scored both touchdowns, and the Pitt Panthers have taken the lead. One quarter of football to go from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and Pitt has taken the lead over the Golden Eagles. And the Panthers did it with racking up more total offense in the third quarter than they had had in the entire first half while holding Southern Mississippi to only 20 yards. This is a key drive for Southern Miss because they sputtered in the third quarter. They're going to come back with some consistency in the fourth quarter. Boyd is the tailback. Instead, they give it to the fullback, Howard McGee, and McGee has no chance. Tumulty, the first man there, number 84, along with Jason Chavis. And the Panthers starting to believe you can see it in the spirit. Got a little rest over there on defense, yeah. and they're playing a little bit more aggressively. Chavis, number 58, the middle linebacker, with penetration. Third down, two. Buck Halter and McKinney will come in in a split back set, and Kevin Bentley, the short yardage quarterback, checks in on third and one, look for the option. Instead, they go straight up the middle. Buck Halter diving forward, should have the first down. Dell Seagraves makes the tackle. Well, let's check the mark. They may have to measure for it. Need to split the 30 or 27 and 28 yard line. And they nearly got John Majors with a chain. <laughs> they got a new Billy Ray Cyrus danced up there. What <laughs> big measurement here? They'd have to kick it away with 14, 13 to go if they don't make it. Inch. Game of inches. And a game of adjustment, as you talked about. They went into the locker room and Pitt has made the adjustments that got gotten them the lead back. You really have to credit the Pitt coaching staff because they made some good adjustments at halftime, came out and really owned the third quarter on both sides of the ball. Tommy Waters back in at quarterback and Jeff Bauer, the coach, trying to make the adjustments now. Buck Halter gets a couple. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Doctor? Let's check in with our buddy John Brown here, our human experiment, 310 pounds worth of John. And uh, our temperature a minute ago, we'll check inside the uniform on our little thermal monitor. It's 103. John, how you feeling? Uh, cramping a lot, cramping a lot. I think a lot of tension, a lot of tension going on in the muscles. Feeling it hard here on the sideline. Hey, we're going to get some fluid in this guy, but uh, obviously a lot of heat inside these uniforms on the sideline. Mike? Jerry, next time we come back to Hattiesburg, John's going to be looking for you. Second and seven. with the big interception of Tommy Waters. The second Southern Miss turnover. Tom Tumblety, the linebacker in the 4-3 defense, number 84. Watch his eyes. He's reading the pattern all the way. Now he reads the eyes of Tommy Waters. Boy, Waters never saw him. Never saw him, and he had his eyes on Tommy Waters the whole time. Tumblety, an outstanding outside linebacker. Pitts ball at the 32. Patton 31, Brooks 32, the running back. Patton. Kevin Jackson, number 91, reached in, got an ankle, and then James Robinson cleaned up. There are the turnovers, and Pittsburgh, one of the youngest teams in the country, has not turned the ball over tonight. Not turned the ball over, and just as Johnny Major's game plan was, I'm going to play very conservative. I want to be around at the end to have a chance to win this game. Done a nice job with his game plan tonight. Approaching field goal territory. A kick like that would put them up by seven. Patton again. Cuts it inside. 
to about the 27 yard line. Eugene Harmon in on the stop. Well, you have to figure this they're going to go back to that pass again to Curtis Martin. Dietrich Gels back in the ball game. Try to get it to Gels. Where they are right now at the 27 yard line, it would be about a 44 yard field goal attempt. We already know that Kalamanitas has the leg to get it there. Patton and Brooks again in the eye. Same formation for a little flat pass. Ryan looks back the other way. Nobody there. And he's sacked. And that could take him out of field goal range. That's a play you can't make. That was the adjustment that John Thompson was talking about on the sideline. Went to a wide rush, but he moved the linebacker out a little further where he could play the flat route. Now look at the wide rush. Cedric Walthall, number 57, in on the play. And you're right, Mike, a good point. You have to throw that ball away exactly. if you're the quarterback. Bobby Hamilton got the tackle, got the sack. He led the team with six a year ago. Pitt will talk it over with 11.57 to go in the game. Back in a moment. It's chasing after something you may never catch. It's hit or miss. And some days it's more miss. It's disappointing. It's dangerous. It's never, ever boring. In other words, it's exactly like a cowboy's life. At Wrangler, we know cowboys. Our genes were invented by them. Wrangler, the Western original. In 47 BC, Cleopatra herself rented the very first luxurious caravan from Thrifty for now to be your bud. Yard field goal for Pittsburgh. We're in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, where Pitt trying to pull the season opening upset over the Golden Eagles of Southern Mississippi. Mike Patrick, along with Mike Gottfried and Dr. Jerry Punch, and that is freshman Steve Kalamanithis who will set up to try a 49-yard field goal. He was wide left on a 47-yarder. Had plenty of distance. This field goal would put the Panthers up by seven. Johnny Majors has to be feeling pretty good about his debut right now. He'd feel even better if this one gets through. Career-long 42-yard field goal for Calvin Ethos. again Mike he caused that because he was able to knock the offensive lineman back you always want to surge out of your defensive lineman right here there's the bias watch the surge they get up inside there's the center there's the block came over the right guard Deke Adams number 49 a junior out of Meridian Mississippi huge play and Southern Miss will set up shop <laughs> Buckhalter gets down to about the pit 46 yard line oh there's there's a huge play I mean a seven point lead at this point in the ball game big play and you, you look at your winners Michael Tobias made the play Mike, they got to throw the football here. They have to throw the football or run the option. They're, they haven't been able to move the ball and get inside. They have to go outside, throw the ball to their running backs versus the linebackers. Waters dumps it to Buckhalter. Tumulty got a piece of it. He lunges forward near the 38-yard line. That's the first down marker. Jason Chavis in on the tackle. Mike, when you go to split backs against a 4-3 defense, you've got your running backs versus linebackers. Now look at the size of the linebacker. Tumble, he's 6'4", 240. Chavis is 6'2", 240. Simpson, 6'3", 215. You have to put those backs on the linebackers. The crowd exhorting the Golden Eagles to come back again. Jones and Boyd are the running backs. The first completion for Waters this half. Jones, not much. And the center of that pit defense has really been shored up over the course of this game. Tom Barnt, number 90, and Matt Haslick, number 96. Oh, Tim Robbins, 65. Really have done a nice job inside. They're not allowing anything to, inside the trap. They're taking the trap play away. They have to go option. They have to throw the ball to the running backs and the tight end. 
And when you take something away, you give up something else, and they, they're giving up what you're saying. Watch the running backs in this play. Chuck Priest back to defensive coordinator. Running backs to the tight end. Option. Waters keeps, goes inside, got to the 31 yard line. That's about three yards shy of a first down. Chavis again on the tackle. With the score 14 to 10, Jeff Bowers probably thinking, now I have two plays because field goal still puts me down by one, although it is a situation where large yards to get, right. he'll kick the field goal, but he has to be thinking in terms of two running plays right now or throwing the football to the running backs. He's running the offense this year as opposed to just being the head coach, which he was a season ago. Waters dumps it over the middle. That should be interference. Sumner was all over the tight end, Anthony Owens. He hit him about a second and a half before the ball got there. Well, you see the coaches of Southern Miss are on the field. They missed an interference call here. But the umpire can't see it because it's behind him. The back judge is the one who should have made the call. This looks like interference on number 46. David Sumner, there's the ball. He's hitting way before oh, yeah. the ball. He missed that play. And he was just all over it. Somebody fell asleep with the striped shirt on in the back, down underneath the goalpost on the three-yard line. Boy, and Jeff Bauer is unloading on the closest official. Fourth and four. They'll go for it. Blitz. Waters throws. Intercepted. Picked off by Jade Jones. So Southern Mississippi comes up empty. The interference penalty, had it been called, would have given them a first down at the Pitt 25-yard line, but it doesn't happen. Pitt still leads by four. The hat on the back, it says, link it up. It's a very simple concept, but it works. Mike, gain of only a yard on the last play. Second down. 7 15 Mike, they better link it up now. Yeah. The offense better go get some of that fence. Waters on a roll. Goes short and complete to Brock. Brock came back. He couldn't get open downfield. And Jeff Bauer told us that he was concerned about his passing game because outside of Brock, who has speed, there is very little speed on the ball club and very little experience. But right now, they may be reduced to throwing to those inexperienced guys. You're right, Mike. The receivers are the probably the most inexperienced part of this football team. But he may have just hit on something with the sprint out pass because yep. that was wide open, both run and pass. And Waters, the kind of athlete who can make it work. Third and three. Run the option. Great play by Simpson to slow it up. Simpson came up, turned the play in, and Tumulty made the tackle. The outside linebackers have turned a great job. Bad read by Tommy Waters because Tommy Waters had to keep this football. Here's the fake. Now as he comes down the line of scrimmage to Simpson. He should have kept the ball. Tom Tumulty, number 84, was the one that kept coming, but Gerald Simpson made the play. He telegraphed the pitch and then went ahead and did it. And they'll have to kick it away. Estes kicking to Mosley. Clock running. 6.17 to go in the game. Estes, nice sailing kick. Mosley at the 29. Excellent punt coverage by Southern Mississippi. No return after a punt of 42. Anthony Owens downfield on special teams. Sometimes I have to go out to record yards to, to look at vehicles that have been wrecked. If you joined us late, here's the storyline from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Curtis Martin has been the star for Pittsburgh, 130 total yards. He has scored both touchdowns. Ryan has been very effective in the short passing game. It hasn't been pretty, but it's worked. 10 out of 16 in one touchdown. Southern Mississippi with three turnovers. They were among the nation's leaders last year in turnover margin. They have kicked it around tonight. And Pitt with 6.08 to go in the game on the verge of pulling an upset. They start from their 29. Martin, the single setback. Ryan with a fake, and he's sacked. Aubrey Johnson, the senior from Newman, Georgia, did not buy the fake. I think so. To me, that's a strange call, too, Coach. Well, it's a strange call, but you're trying to get them, catch them off guard with a little act, play action pass. What you got to do is get the fake. Second and 16. 
snake over here and then turn out in front of a waggle naked. But Aubrey Johnson, number 97, was waiting for it. Just trying to surprise him, Mike. Well, it didn't surprise Aubrey Johnson. Spotted back at the 22, second and 16. And now Ryan will go with a little short pass. Nice catch by Martin. Shanks the tackle. Martin down the sideline. He may have a first down out near the 40-yard line. Gully and Ratcliffe had to knock him out of bounds. But what a night for the junior from Pittsburgh, Curtis Martin. When they look back at this film and this tape here at Southern Mississippi, they have not been able to stop this play all night. Good pressure on John Ryan. He just kind of steps up and gets the ball to Curtis Martin. Now he makes Perry Carter miss. And he's down the sideline for a big yardage and a big first down. And tell you, he hasn't tired this whole game. No, he hasn't. Seven catches, 84 yards for Martin. He's rushed for another 63. He's in the backfield now with Vince Williams. 5.21 to go in the game. Another fresh series of downs for the Panthers. Martin back to the ground. Gets nearly five up to the 46-yard line. Albert McRae made the tackle. Martin carries out the 44-yard line. Looking ahead, game Southern four. Mississippi has all Second three of its two. timeouts left, but we are closing in on five minutes to go in the game. And it's not a big play offense. They need a touchdown if they get the ball back. Tobias comes out for a breather. Demetrius Carter, number 64, checks in in his spot for Southern Mississippi. And they have to find a way to stop Martin. Haven't stopped him yet tonight. Stack him up at the line of scrimmage that time. Kevin Jackson had him up high. Couple other guys down low, including Demetrius Carter. Martin carries for a of one to the 45. John Majors changing the uniform colors back to the old gold along with the blue and white trying to bring back some of the magic that he certainly brought Pittsburgh in his first stint and you know it's not the uniforms but it's just the attitude that he's installed here. He's done a nice job in every program and it's important to him that he goes back memory wise to the uniforms that were successful. Sure. Third and five. to Martin and Martin made the catch. The ball's not loose, incomplete. And Derek Hervey came up number 18 to make the huge hit. That was so close to an interception, Mike. John Ryan telegraphed this pass from the Didn't start. He? Knew he was going to throw the little swing pass to Curtis Martin. There was no bacon, and then he just hangs it up. And Derek Hervey, number 18, a chance to make the play. And what a job by Hervey, because first he's thinking interception with that ball hanging up in the air, but then he saw it was going to be caught and leveled Martin. So with 3.48 to go, Leon will punt to Perry Carter. Another beauty by Kevin Leon. Carter back to the five. Can't get outside. Denorse Mosley on special teams. Leon with a beautiful kick in Southern Mississippi. Backed up deep in its own territory. Hope you'll be with us every Saturday for college football. It starts at 11.30 in the morning. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James with college game day. Then at 12.30, we'll go to Columbus, Ohio. Rice against Ohio State. At 7 o'clock, the residents in scoreboard show. All the scores and highlights. And at 7.30, our CFA primetime matchup, Texas against number 11, Colorado from Boulder. The story, 3.37 to go in the ballgame. Southern Mississippi has to go 89 yards to take the lead. Waters out of the backfield to Boyd. Boyd up to the 24-yard line. Hamilton made the tackle. It's interesting, they didn't have the chain set. No, they didn't. Chain and were, were running while the play was in uh, moving, so they didn't even know where they were at. They know where they're at now. Southern Miss with all three timeouts left. Buck Calder and McKinney in the split back set. 3.21 to go in the ball game. This may be Southern Miss's last chance. The pit defense has played brilliantly in the second half. Buck Calder. Jones takes him down at 
the 30 yard line. Mike, here's where you expect of your Southern Miss and your Jeff Power. You expect the winning season last year where you had success now to show in the last three minutes of the game, get confidence in your offense. If you're Johnny Majors, you expect that the two weeks that he's had in preseason camp and spring practice and then where he taught him attitude comes through right now. You know Johnny Majors would love to win this, but Jeff Bauer in such a huge game for his program. Under pressure, goes behind, McKinney couldn't come up with it. The pressure being applied by Tom Bart. The reason it's huge, Mike, is the fact that they usually play seven games on the road here at Southern Mississippi, and sometimes eight. So they have to go to Georgia, Auburn, Alabama, so they have to be able to win their home games. They play seven away games so that they can finance the other sports here. They're trying to get Ole Miss and Mississippi State to put them back on the schedule. Waters, 10 out of 1988 yards. Third and two. Waters over the middle. Got his tight end in the first down. Anthony Owen, the senior from Auburn, Alabama. A tremendous blocker, and he showed you the hands there. It has to become a tight end running back versus linebackers pass game for Southern Miss. And then eventually try to air one out to Fred Brock, number seven. Also, the receiver that's been quiet tonight is Mark Montgomery, number 87. He's been quiet. Possession receiver had caught a pass. Clock running. 2.19 to go in the game. Waters under pressure, and they've got it. They'll use one of those timeouts now. Hoslick gets the sack. Zatidi Moody was the guy who created the play. Spun off a block and forced Waters out of the pocket. Clock running. We're under two. They're going to let it run with 158. And it's second and 17. The Pitt Panthers on the verge of a huge win for Johnny Major. And Simpson is right there. Gerald Simpson, Simpson with a stunning game at outside linebacker. I think they've got to use a timeout here to get the ball up the field a little bit more. They Jeff face Bar the third and 16. The clock runs with 125. What they may be thinking if they don't get it, they'll kick to pit and use the timeouts on defense. Not much time, not enough time left to do that, Mike. Waters with time in the pocket. Scott Arthur, the tight end, has the ball in pit territory at the 48 first down. A gain of 20. What a throw by Waters. That's the best thing that Tommy Waters does. Against two deep coverage, he can find the tight end down the middle between 15, 25 yards on the middle read. Now you've got 107 to go and all timeouts left. Waters up to short by Walker. Fights off a tackle down to the 35. Another first down. Chavis made the tackle. Here's where the confidence of a veteran team. Johnny Majors with a young defensive team, only two seniors on the field. He's looking for leadership right now to those two seniors. Let's restart the clock, 55 seconds to go. Waters to Boyd in the flat football. Boyd was looking downfield when that ball is floated to a back out of the backfield. The first thing he's thinking is linebacker coming. He wants to get a look to see where he is. Well, he did a little peeking. He took his eyes right out, tried to see what, whether how much ground he was going to have after he made the catch and didn't look the ball into his hands. We will have the Wrangler players of the game for you at the end of the game, not far away, 51 seconds to go. Second and 10. Number seven has to figure in here somewhere, Fred Brock. And now Waters is going to use the first of his timeouts. He wants to talk to Jeff Bauer. And excuse me, Pitt timeout, takes the timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Mississippi driving with 51 seconds to go in the game. Excellent timeout by Johnny Well, you Majors. have a veteran coach, Johnny Majors. Chuck Drees back to defensive coordinator urging his team on. But it's a good timeout because his team was on the run and rest. And there's no sense taking those two timeouts back to Pittsburgh with him. Use him in this game because he's not, he doesn't figure to get the ball back unless they score right away here. And Southern Mississippi has all three of its timeouts. They face a second and 10 from the 35. Field goal doesn't do him any good. But Mulder and McKinney are the split backs behind. Waters. Three-man rush. Waters throw. Penalty for the interception is second. Dell Seagraves 
was in the face of Waters, and Tumulty makes his second interception of the ball game, and Pitt may have sewn up an upset victory. Tommy Waters with a mistake just didn't get the ball over Tom Tumulty because you see number 84 down on the field. Now, but here's the play. No one's open. Tommy Waters moves to the right. Now he tries to arch it just over the outstretched arms of Tom Tumulty, but he made the interception and probably gave Johnny Majors his first victory here at Pitt. You know, one of the Pittsburgh newspapers in an article this week said that Southern Mississippi was playing with Division II talent and playing their overhead, playing over their head, and Pitt should win easily. I think that's way off the mark. I don't think they have Division II talent. I think this is a very good football team that's going to win its share. I think that puts a lot of pressure on Pitt, and they really deserve what they get tonight. I think Pitt has really came in here with a great game plan. Johnny Major is very conservative, didn't want to lose the game, and just wanted to be around just like he is with 43 seconds to win it. You got to credit Johnny Majors with a good game plan. Jeff Bowers has a good football team here. They're going to be on the road against Alabama, Auburn, Georgia. They're going to learn from this game and the best improvement you make as a football team is between game one to game two. Tumulty was in on 15 tackles tonight. Had two interceptions. Outstanding linebacking play. And right now, Pitt will try to run out the clock. Southern Mississippi will still have its three timeouts and they'll use them all LaRon Brooks gets the carry. They'll stop it with 37 seconds to go. So Southern Mississippi, they're not out of it yet. They'll have a chance to get the football back. On the carry for Pittsburgh. No game. One day you wear flats instead of heels and buy yogurt instead of the post, only you have no spoon. And now you've missed Ann Devroy's story, which would have been... this ball game with a string of 15 straight victories in home openers. They're 37 seconds away from seeing that streak snapped. Jeff Bauer wants the defense to hold. He's got two more timeouts. He can stop it on second and third down if they hold and go for the punt block. Pitt will keep it on the ground. The fullback, Laron Brooks, still pounding forward out to the 35-yard line. It'll be third and five. Another timeout with 30 seconds to go. Our Wrangler players of the game from Pittsburgh. Who else? Curtis Martin, 152 total yards and two touchdowns. Tip of the hat to a couple of Pitt linebackers, too, at tremendous games. But Martin was the offense. On defense for Southern Mississippi, Michael Tobias, three sacks, seven total tackles. He played havoc in the pit backfield, and John Ryan has seen enough of him. There is Martin, still in the lineup, not even breathing hard, and he has had a full night's work. Jerry needed that thermometer under his pads tonight. <laughs> yeah. It would have exploded, I think. Southern Mississippi will... Their defense facing a third and five here. They'll have to dig in and stop that, use their final timeout. Sports Center follows our broadcast from Hattiesburg. Hope you stay tuned for that. The Giants against the Braves, that big series. Mississippi Auburn, the game we were going to be at. And NFL News, Steve Young, that improving thumb. Will he open the season as the 49ers quarterback? A very unhappy sideline right now at Southern Mississippi. And Johnny Majors, he's doing what you did so well. He's looking ahead to maybe the punt block. As now, you got to watch this, you got to watch that. He's, he's warning him about the punt block, and then he's getting ready for the Virginia Tech game. <laughs> if the Panthers can hold on here, it will be a very happy ride back to Pittsburgh on the charter that will leave right after the ball game. Third and six. Martin fumbled, or the quarterback, Ryan, fumbled the ball and then got it back. He was going to give it to Martin. Ryan recovers his fumble. Now, this is the play, Mike, awesome. where you're in the ball game with 26 seconds to go. You bring all 11 up. Forget about putting somebody back. Yeah. All 11 have to come up here to block this kick. Now, we'll see if they're going to send Perry Carter back or are they going to bring him up here to block. Talking it over on the sideline, so and the man under the gun is Kevin Leon out of Al Anaheim, California. 50-year senior who has punted very, very well tonight. And his job is not to go for a boomer, just kick it. Just get it off. He has really had a good night punting the football. Three punts over 50 yards. 
They're bringing 10. They're going to take one back. Number 19, Perry Carter. They're figuring if they don't get it, that he may be able to do something on his own. 26 seconds to go in the ball game. 10 minutes to line of scrimmage, and they'll be coming hard on the near side. Derek Hervey, very fast quarterback. Leon got it out of there. A low line drive. He doesn't care about that. He did his job. Carter. To the 35. To the 40. To the 42. With 14. Now make it 13 seconds to go in the game. George Mooring with his second special teams tackle tonight. Southern Mississippi with no timeouts. And you really can't throw it in the end zone from 58 yards away. No, it's a Hail Mary now. You've got to line your receivers up here. You don't have time enough have to throw the ball down the field here. With all three receivers to one side here, you got a receiver up at the top. Just need to hang it up now and get the deep throw. Almost over. Throws it up for grabs. Almost caught, it's intercepted by Dippin' Sumner, the fourth interception of the half for the Steeler defense. And Johnny Majors knows he's got it now. Looks like a young man, doesn't he? Really excited. David Sumner, number 46. Tommy Waters just putting the ball up. Now it becomes a basketball jump ball. That was nearly caught by Ryan Pearson, number 81. Johnny says, that way. We got it. So John Majors opens his second stint at Pittsburgh as a 10-point underdog, comes to Southern Mississippi, and one more snap of the ball, he will have won his first game as the new head coach of the Pitt Panthers. And it's over. Pittsburgh stuns a sellout crowd here in Southern Mississippi. They win it 14 to 10, and Johnny Majors will come to midfield to get a well-deserved handshake from Jeff Bauer. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. And Jerry, I know you got a happy coach there. A big smile from Johnny Majors, coach. Uh, you're going to be awfully proud of your young ball club tonight. Congratulations. Proud? I've never been proud of a football team and a staff in my entire life. I'll tell you something. We, we just kept fighting and fighting and fighting and these young men have come a long way in the last eight months, and we've got a long way to go, but it's a great way to start anyway. Curtis Martin and the offense, very impressive tonight. Well, they did just what it took. I'll tell you something. We weren't too scintillating and too excited, but by gosh, we kept coming in and hanging in there and making big first downs and overcoming penalties, and our defense got better as the game went on. Just, I was continuing to be amazed. I'm, I'm extremely proud of all of them. Gosh, it's a great night. Coach, congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm proud of the whole pit outfit. <laughs> Johnny Majors, it's Majors Magic back in Pittsburgh, and it starts tonight, guys. Boy, Jerry, you're right, and it's some coaching job by that veteran of major college experience, Tom Tumulty, with two interceptions. One of the stars of the game for the Pitt Panthers. And Curtis Martin was the star on offense. He did it all. Our final score, the Pitt Panthers 14, the Golden Eagles of Southern Mississippi 10. For Mike Godfrey, Jerry Punch, and our entire crew, Mike Patrick, good night from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. <laughs>